Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another episode of A View from Tracy's Point. And we're here to recap tonight's episode of Being Mary Jane, um, season four, episode three, which was titled Getting Real. So the show opens up and we find out that Mary Jane's little brother, whose name I can't remember, <laughs> you don't know how I am with remembering these damn names. So he's in New York City and I guess he's trying to become a real estate mogul and he's living in this 15, I think she said 15 million dollar um, penthouse. And so Mary Jane has touched base with him so that he can help her um, find her own place. And so she says that, you know, she loves the place that he's staying in and she needs something exactly like it just with um, a few less zeros than what's on the price tag of that one. And so we move over to the office and Kara is there and Mary Jane, you know, finally lets Kara know that she gets it, that Rhonda is not her friend and that she can't um, trust her. Then we have Michael Ely who plays Justin Talbert. And if you remember, his character was introduced on last, um, the last episode, they didn't come on last week, so the week before. And he's already ruffling um, Kara's feathers, stepping on her toes. So he must be don't know um, about Kara because she will get with him and get with him real quick. So they're in their story meeting, which is when all the producers and I guess the on-air personalities get together and they toss around story ideas. And so it becomes apparent that Rhonda and Justin, you know, they're going to undermine Kara and um, Mary Jane, you know, and make like, you know, they can't do the stories that are coming up or somebody else would be better at doing the stories. And so Mary Jane, you know, she goes in and meets with Garrett afterwards to ask him what's going on. So he alludes to the fact that Justin doesn't like her interviewing style. So he calls Justin in so that he can pretty much tell Mary Jane what he told her. So Justin brings up this video um, that I guess was like a compilation of videos that he had created on Mary Jane from the end of her, um, when she was in Atlanta. And remember she was like going off, they let her do her own show and she was like the angry black woman thing. And so he was telling her that, you know, that wasn't going to work in the New York market or for such a wide audience that they reach. And so he felt that um, she was better doing like the fluff stories and not being like a serious commentator because she can't bring that, you know, to their market. So Mary Jane goes to Kara, you know, who tells her that, you know, she has to find her own stories and sell them to Garrett and Justin and just basically figure out how to beat them at their own game. So back at her hotel room, you know, I'm about ready for Mary Jane to get up out of that hotel room also. So she's there with Mr. London. And so, you know, he's trying to be helpful, but, you know, he's these close quarters that they're in that are kind of like suffocating each other. And then it's becoming agitating. And, you know, he's trying to watch some crazy reality TV show while Mary Jane is trying to, you know, brainstorm for ideas for her show. So they're kind of like clashing a little bit. So then Mary Jane, you know, ask him what he's watching. So he tells her about the show and it stars Cardi B from Love and Hip Hop, New York. And I may have gotten this all wrong, I'll be honest with you guys, because I was writing as I was watching the show. But I think he said that Cardi B is, so she plays a character named Mercedes. And Mercedes is dating some professional athlete, but the guy has like four different women or four different baby mamas and they're all living in the house together or something. I could be totally wrong, but I thought that was what I heard. And so he's basically telling Mary Jane that, you know, this is one of the highest rated shows on television and that, you know, it might be a good idea if she could interview somebody like this Mercedes character because, you know, it's really hot, you know, like, pop culture or something. He tells Mary Jane that he actually gets some of his comedy material from watching shows like these. Back at the studio, Justin and Garrett, you know, they're salivating over this professional uh, baseball player. 
and it's a story that Justin had pitched at the story meeting that they had earlier. So Cara, you know, she's watching them and then she goes over and kind of listens in on the interview and she overhears the guy, the baseball player telling the guy who interviewed him that, you know, he wants to get into broadcasting once his baseball career is over with. So, you know, Cara's blank. So Kara's brain get the tick in and, you know, she has an idea up her sleeve and I don't know what it is, but we know she's thinking of something that's going to help Mary Jane. So Kara goes over to Mary Jane and Mary Jane is in her office watching um, the reality show with Cardi B and she tells Kara that she thinks she has a show idea. And so, you know, Kara's kind of skeptical, but she brings it up in the, their next story meeting and suggests that Rhonda does the interview, knowing damn well that Rhonda was not going to sit down and interview Cardi B. And so it kind of like worked in their favor because it kind of circled back to Mary Jane being the perfect person to do the interview. Oh, also in the meeting, um, Justin brought up that he didn't think it was a good idea for Mary Jane to interview somebody like Cardi B because Cardi B would uh, push Mary Jane um, buttons and Mary Jane would end up blowing a fuse in the middle of the interview. So Justin and Mary Jane, you know, they sit down and they, you know, start talking and taking jabs at each other about what happened when they both worked at CNN. And so Justin thinks that she's um, going to fail, <laughs> like just put it out there on the table. And he tells her, you know, that if she does the interview the way he tells her to do it, that, you know, hopefully he can get her through it. But if she, you know, decides to do it her way, then she's going to prove to everybody else what he had already said about her which caused her to lose her job at CNN and then Mary Jane you know basically her only comeback is the fact that Rhonda you know brought him there to be like a pawn in her little game that she's playing and that he's nothing more than a puppet you know but Justin's one of those people that he has like a certain arrogance about him and he's not going to let um, Mary Jane pull him down you know he's going to stay up here and you know like somebody posted on Twitter and said that um Justin acts like one of those black guys that was hurt by somebody when he was in middle school. And so now he wants to punish every black woman that he ever met for what this one girl did. And I could kind of relate with that because he does act like he has an axe to grind with Mary Jane. Like she is a reflection of everything bad that has ever happened to him when he interacted with a black woman. So then we have Kara and the ball player. And like I said before, you know, she's up to something. We just got to figure out what it is. And so she pretty much um, goes to Garrett and tells Garrett that she wants to bring the ball player back because she has like a new story angle. But he's asking her, you know, is it about his retirement? Is he going to announce that he's retiring? And then Carl says, no, you know, he said he wanted to get into broadcasting. And so I have an idea about letting him cover, I guess, do like a celebrity um, spot on one of the sports segments where he talks about college baseball or something. So... Hopefully, Cara has a plan for Mary Jane because Mary Jane is all out in left field and don't know what she's doing. So Mary Jane and Mr. London, you know, they're getting a little closier and cozier and cozier. And Mary Jane, you know, she's telling him about she wants to find her, you know, get out of the hotel and get her own place. And then somehow the conversation kind of like took a turn. And I was trying to figure out, was Mary Jane like kind of leading into she wants him to move in with her because there was a scene where you know she was saying what she needs in an apartment and then he was saying what he needs in an apartment and Mary Jane was like she needs um <laughs> she said she needs a brand new bathroom so wherever she gets her place they're gonna have to remodel the bathroom and bring in you know new um toilets and sinks and everything. She says she's a stickler for that. And so Mr. London says that all he needs is a strong bed and a good woman. And so then he starts talking about um, radiators versus central heat and air or something. So I guess he has a thing about radiators. And of course, Mary Jane knows nothing about radiators being from Atlanta and not, um, I think that's a big thing like up north in New York or whatever. So, you know, they're in a taxi cab, and so he tells the taxi driver to pull over. And the next thing we know, him and Mary Jane are in like a dominatrix shop, and you know, they're looking at masks and cuffs and chains and all this. And then, um, I think Mr. 
Sister London told Mary Jane, she picked up these like bead things and she was like, you know, waving it in front of him. And then he was telling her, you know, that that goes up your butt, you know, it's like a butt plug or whatever. And then he starts wiggling his finger like this and Mary Jane was sitting there like, um, is he kind of like hinting that he wants me to stick my finger up his butt? So she was just like very confused by what he was insinuating. So then they get back to the place, you know, back to her hotel room and they are in the bed and get ready to get busy. And it was just so awkward and uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> so I can't even imagine, but she did stick her finger up his butt and he seemed to have enjoyed it um, quite well. But, you know, when she pulled her finger out, she was like trying to kiss him and he was pushing the finger away and everything. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, what a mood killer. Because now she got to get up and go, you know, wash her hands and try and get that, you know, whatever, off her finger, the stench, the, I don't know. But I was thinking to myself, like, they don't have condoms for your finger. Like, if you're going to be fingering people up their butthole and stuff, like, because it seems like when you go to the doctor and they be doing the, an the anal exam, don't they put, like, a glove or something on there? Maybe they use a whole glove on their finger. But it seems like, you know, for the sex thing, that there would be, like, a little one-glove thing that you put on your finger if you're going to be doing all that, and then you can, like, take it off and throw it in the trash. But anyway, it was a mood killer, and... I don't know what happened after that because they cut away from the scene as Mary Jane was getting out of bed to go wash her hands. So the following day at the office, you know, Mary Jane is telling Carl about her new um, sexual experience. And I'm just thinking like, if one of my friends told me that they had stuck their finger up somebody's butt raw, that I probably would like, for a while, <laughs> be looking at them like, don't touch my food, don't touch my plate, don't touch nothing with that finger, you know, but they laughed about it and everything. Oh, so earlier um, in the show, Cara, you know, Garrett did tell Cara that she could do the little segment with the um, baseball player. His name is Orlando. And so we have a scene where I guess it's like after hours and Cara is working with him on his delivery and how to do the little news piece. And so he, you know, he's kind of like, you know, he has on a shirt and tie and jacket. And then Cara tells him to relax and she unbuttons his um, shirt and takes off his tie. And then he tells her that he has this lucky jersey that he carries around with him, you know, so he takes off his, you know, his shirt and, and jacket and puts on the, um, the lucky jersey that he carries around with him. And then Cara gets some Patron or something and they have a drink. So they have this little scene where he finally relaxes and he does the news story, but he's sort of kind of like, you know, get a ratchet with doing it. And then he, um, you know, tells Cara, well, if you can do it better, you know, let me see. And so then he takes off the jersey. So he's all bare chested and everything. And Cara puts on the jersey. And so she's just seducing him. And like I said, I don't know what she's seducing him for, but um, it was working. She was working her magic. So after um, her and Mary Jane talk, she goes into Garrett and shows him the footage, you know, from when she was working with Orlando. And, you know, I think I kind of get her angle at this point because Garrett once again talks about, you know, did he mention anything about retiring? And Carl says, well, I have some show ideas and we'll talk about it later. So I think she's going to manipulate Orlando into giving them the scoop, but only giving them the scoop if Mary Jane could do the interview is where I think she's going with it. So Justin gives Mary Jane a list of questions for her interview with Cardi B and he basically tells her, just follow these questions, ask these questions and you'll do fine. But they've kind of flipped the script because instead of Mary Jane interviewing Cardi B, you know, about the reality TV show, they say that she has some fashion line or bathing suit line or something. So they want the interview to be about this fashion line. So after Mary Jane leaves out with Garrett, she runs into Rhonda and then Rhonda's kind of like boosting her head up again, you know, telling her, you know, you're never going to get where you're trying to go by playing it safe. And sometimes, you know, you got to step out of the box because you want to be better than the next person in the office with you or something. So I'm thinking Mary Jane is going to go off script, you know, with this interview and not do what Justin told her to do. So then we get into the interview and it was so ratchet. <laughs> like Mary Jane was sitting there like, I am so, you know, above this. Like, why 
is this going the way that it is? And then you have Justin, you know, he's in the control room and he knows that this is going to be like a total disaster. And so Mary Jane asked Cardi B to show her, you know, some of the swimsuits. So they got these um, un-industry-like models, you know, modeling these bathing suits. And so Mary Jane is trying to play along, but then Cardi B insults her and tells her that she's too old and too narrow or something to wear her swimsuits. And then Cardi B says something about she has a pop-up shop because Mary Jane said, well, where can we find your fashions? And so she starts talking about the pop-up shop and how they don't give out the information. And she's just like making jabs at Mary Jane. And then Mary Jane just cuts the interview short <laughs> and basically says that um, you can find Cardi B on the street corner selling the swimwear out of the trunk of her car. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh my God, Mary Jane, no, you did not do that. But um, it was funny. So after the interview, you know, Mary Jane's walking down the hallway and she passes by, which I guess was like the green room and Cardi B is in there with her crew, you know, with the girls that modeled and her assistant and stuff. And so Mary Jane overhears her talking about her. So she turns around and she goes back. So these two get into like a verbal exchange and while they're going at each other, the assistant is videotaping um, the little exchange. And Mary Jane basically told Cardi B, so her character on this reality show is Mercedes. And so she says, you're not a Mercedes, you're a Buick. And then she tells Cardi B that the best, the best thing she can do for society is to swallow her children. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then, you know, Cardi B comes back, you know, telling she's stuck up and she's fake. And, you know, Mary Jane's like, well, you have to do what you have to do. And I'm just like, oh no, Mary Jane, you just played right into Justin and what he said that you were going to do. But I'm just praying. Let's all just have a group prayer that this thing actually works in Mary Jane's favor because you know with social media today if no matter how crazy what you did is if it garners a lot of views then people will run with it so let's pray that that's what happens for Mary Jane and then of course as soon as she walks out of the um, green room after arguing with Cardi B she runs into Justin and he just has that look on his face like, damn it, didn't I tell you that this was going to happen? You know, but at that moment, that's the last thing Mary Jane wants to deal with. So to wipe away her blues and get in a better mood, she decides to go look for her brother so that he can go take her um, apartment shopping. So when she gets to the penthouse where he's staying at, you know, he tells her that he's busy and that she can't come in and of course that just makes Mary Jane want to come in more because now she wants to know who's in there with him so he finally lets her in and it just turns out that he's getting ready to have a massage which I didn't understand that whole setup anyway so he tells Mary Jane that you know he's about to relax and get this massage done but he'll give her the key to the place that he wanted to show her and she would just have to go on her own so she takes the keys and she goes and gets Mr. London. So they go and look at the place. And it was a really nice place. You know, she's looking for that whole glass. You know, remember how she was in Atlanta and the whole house was glass, you know, windows all the way around. So she wants that effect in New York also. And so she's going on and on about the apartment. And Mr. London is basically saying that, you know, it has central... Yeah, he wanted the radiator, and I think this place has central heat and air. And so I think he's kind of like feeling like Mary Jane is rushing things. And so he asks her, you know, what's the rush? You know, you should be looking at this place for you, not for the both of us, because I can't even consider moving in with somebody, you know, without them meeting my kids first. And so then Mary Jane just pretty much tells him that he's either in or he's out. And he's like, well, I'm out. So she said, well, goodbye. Like, get out. I don't want to see you anymore. And I'm like, damn, Mary Jane, what you going through? You just going to break up with the man like that? But Mr. London's like, okay. And then he left. So the next day, you know, they're at the office and Carl lets Mary Jane, um, see the video of her and Cardi B going at each other because Mary J had no idea that she had been set Twitter on fire with this video. And so um, Carl pretty much lets her know that it's a good thing because now all these, um, you know, other talk shows, other black people in the industry, they're taking it from the approach that, you know, they have to put up with so much and, you know, go through so much just to be on air. And so they can kind of relate to Mary Jane. And then I think she said that Melissa, Melissa Harris, 
I can't think of her name, but she used to have the show on MSNBC, but they had a falling out. And so she wants to interview Mary Jane. So thank God it turned out to be a plus and the whole thing is going to work in Mary Jane's favor. Sort of. So Mary Jane goes in to apologize to Garrett for what happened, you know, but he kind of brushes it off because he says the ratings were good. But then he tells her that Rhonda has a great idea and so Mary Jane said, what's that? And he said that she thinks that you should become the, the station's um, or the show's web correspondent. So Mary Jane looking at him like, well, that's not a plus because that means now I'm not going to be on air at all. I'll be on the website. And so he pretty much was like, yeah, so maybe it didn't work in her favor. So hopefully uh, Cara can come through with the baseball player because they just... Um, Lowering and lowering and lowering uh, Mary Jane's stock at this uh, TV show. So Mary Jane is back at her hotel room and she's sitting there sulking, looking sad and depressed. You know, she's like been relegated to the web series and she done lost her man. She don't know if she should get the apartment or not. And so, you know, there's a knock at the door and it is Mr. Um, London. And so she says, you know, why are you here? Because I broke up with you. And he was like, oh, we broke up. I thought we just had an argument. And so, you know, he pretty much asked Mary Jane, you know, what's going on? Why are you, you know, so anxious and acting so desperate? And so she tells him that she's about to turn 40 and that, you know, she had this list of things that she would have accomplished. And I guess being married and having kids were part of her things to do by the time that you're 40. So Mr. London, you know, pretty much tells her that, you know, don't live your life by list. You know, it never works out. And he tells her, you know, anyway, uh, 40 is the new 30 and for black women it's the new 20. But I'm here to tell you, Lee, that 40 is just damn 40. <laughs> Take it from somebody who tried to buy into the 40 is the new 30 thing. It, it really isn't 40 is 40. And so, you know, Mary Jane, she seems to kind of like have calmed down and, you know, is willing to, you know, work things out with him. And he lets her know that he's made arrangements for his kids to come to the States over spring break. So Mary Jane will get an opportunity to meet them. And so I thought that was really cute. And he told her that, you know, for the first time that yeah, she can check off her list that um, by the time she's 40, that she will be in her first real relationship. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. So she was supposed to meet Kara and she texts Kara to let Kara know that she's not going to be able to make it. And, you know, of course, Kara's happy for her because she's ready for Mary Jane to find a man for real, for real. And so um, as Kara is replying back to Mary Jane, um, somebody knocks at her door and when she goes to open the door, it is the baseball player. So let me find out that both Mary Jane and Kara have found love in the Big Apple. So that's it for me for this episode. Um, I really did enjoy it. And do you guys think that Mary Jane and Mr. London are going to make it? Or were you like me hoping that Michael Ely was going to come on the show and blow her bike out? And do you think that something's going to, like chemistry is going to build between Mary Jane and Michael Ely and he's going to break up her in London? Let me know what you think below in the comments. Go ahead and rate the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And you can do all three of those down below the video. And until next time, guys, take care. Bye-bye. I'm not sure.